Hello, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, Michelle is staying uh, for the tea break after this, so if you wish to meet him, ask him questions, take pictures, yep. he's more than available, which is great. We have a few questions to ask you, and then we're going to open it up to the audience. Mm -hmm. um, question one is, are you noticing any recent trends for social, such as wedding events during, uh, for dining requirements? Um, well, <laughs> We have noticed some, some trends and uh, moving towards uh, slightly smaller, smaller events, smaller weddings, more intimate. Um, and, uh, and as far as food goes, um, bespoke to order, things that are really different to, to your classical kind of wedding fare. And also sharing platters, which I think is really great because it's very convivial, um, as opposed to sort of plating up, although there's, a, there's still a massive demand and the majority of it is plated food. Um, but I find that impersonal. I think, I think sharing platters are wonderful, and it brings people together as food always does. So if you're bringing sort of the, you know, little, little sharing bowls on the table, and then people help themselves, and it brings people together. You are known primarily as a Michelin starred restaurateur serving. Um, if you serve 100 a la carte covers a night, which is staggered time-wise, it's very different prospect to catering a 100-person event that is served simultaneously. Mm -hmm. How do you ensure each person receives the same level of the Michel Rue experience? <laughs> um, oh, gosh, I mean, you say that, but... Uh, a busy a la carte restaurant could be a hundred covers and it's all a la carte, so you never know what people are going to order. So, you know, if you've got a, a banqueting style where everybody's got the same food, it, it should be easier to get the perfection that you want on every single plate. Um, Timing-wise, it always runs late. We're running late. I mean, I mean, and, and weddings are no exception. They, they will always run a little bit late. So it's a question of choosing the right menu and food that will, that will stay uh, perfect for just that right time. And then being able to deliver. You know, and that's, that's, that's the secret. Okay. You've had an input into the lunch serve today, and I've seen the menu. It looks very impressive. <laughs> Do you want to talk us through it? <laughs> no, no, it's a surprise. You've all, you've, <laughs> I'm not going to go through the menu. Gosh, no. Okay. Okay. Um, do we have any questions for Michelle Rue from the audience? None of you? That's good. I can go home then. <laughs> None? You must have one. You, you're not going to ask me about other souffles, why, why your souffle when you're making it at home doesn't rise? <laughs> Actually, souffles on the menu for weddings are always very tricky because that's another thing that has to be done at the very, very last second. Um, but it is, it is doable and it is achievable. And uh, we're, you know, in this ballroom, we've we've done up to uh, 240 people, uh, and souffles are, are quite possible because the kitchen is just behind that brown door there, and uh, they come out perfect every single one. You know, beautiful rice. Andrew. Yeah. Gosh, that's a, that's a really good question and very, very difficult to answer in, in a few seconds or in a few sentences. Um, I, I, I think you have to bring everyone together. And, and in our industry, and, and probably yours as well, you, sometimes you're bringing in casual workers, so people that you haven't necessarily worked with before. So wherever possible, it is to work with people that you've worked before, even if they are casual workers um, and that's that's very often the case with front of house but you have to bring them together uh, before and share your beliefs and your passion so training is vital but being able to get them to understand what you want what you want to achieve but not to overachieve if you if you if you give somebody I don't know, we're talking basics here, but, but maybe you have a silver service and you're going to give that to somebody who's never done silver service before. You can, it's just not going to work. So you have to understand the skill set of the person that you're employing and bring that into the team. Teamwork is so, so important, so vital. We do that, the, you know, team bonding here, it's corny, it sounds corny, team bonding, but it actually bloody works. Um, and, you know, working as, as one and sharing your belief. I don't know if, if you saw my program I did about 10 years ago called Service, um, where I took a, a bunch of kids uh, and tried to teach them how wonderful 
our industry is, the front of house. Um, and it, it's not too dissimilar from what you're asking, and it is. It's taking people with you on that journey. Any more questions? Okay, hi. Um, my name's Kay, I'm from Intricate Creation. And um, my husband's over there, so I just want to make sure he knows that we need to go for dinner. Okay. Um, um, everyone knows that food, the food industry has really gone from leaps and bounds over the yes. last 10 years. Um, a very standard question, really. Inspiration. Mm. Where do you get it from? Because there are so many new up-and-coming chefs out there Absolutely. that are well, really amazing things. I thought it was really interesting to hear Tony, because I, I was stood at the back there listening to him, and he's saying he gets inspiration from everywhere, and that's, that's so true. Although I, I, I do have an issue with airports. <laughs> I mean, ha has Tony ever been to Luton Airport, for example? <laughs> I mean, but but I, f I, I do understand the theory and what he said, because very often I find inspiration uh, you know, just walking down the street or when, when I'm out, out for a run, uh, and, it, and it's, it's when you least expect it. Um, but but food-wise, I, I love traveling, like Tony said, uh, and, and traveling, and, and when I travel, I, the first thing I do is I, I check out the local uh, food scene, the local markets, etc. Uh, I also speak to the taxi drivers because taxi drivers know everything about a city. And especially when it comes to food, I've yet to see a taxi driver that doesn't enjoy his food. And let's not forget, taxi drivers, they listen into all the conversations. And when they pick up people from the restaurant, you know, they'll say, wow, that was good, that was not so good, this was great, this was, you know. Uh, so I always get a lot of info from, from taxi drivers, where to eat in a city. But you know, it, 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 it is, inspiration can come in various forms and various guises. Uh, but for me, it's travel and it's the food markets and eating out. I do an incredible amount of eating out. Uh, and it's, and it, that, that's not copying recipes, because cop you know, copy and paste is one thing, uh, but inspiration is another. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.